the operatives know what's really what time. And is. they also know who's going to be president. Yeah. And they think they think it's going to get shooken up. It's not. That's that's the thing. They push these guys forward and give you the illusion of choice. And then you just go Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden. And like you made that choice. Yeah. You didn't make that choice. That choice was made for you. We've got Adam Simon, who is a writer, producer, director, has done lots of movies with very famous people. And um, that's that's the B story. But the A story here is that you, you wrote a pilot that I read that I think is fascinating about Jonathan Pollard, who sold the Israelis, I believe, the book that the CIA or the codes the CIA uses for encryption mm. to bring in all their all the information from overseas. It was it was basically their Rosetta Stone. Yeah. And Pollard gave that to the Israelis, did 32 years in jail. He's now in Israel. Mm probably somewhat of a national hero there, definitely persona Absolutely. non grata here, went through hell in prison. You somehow, because I started watching sort of clips of you talking about the Iran-Contra scandal, which you know I remember very well, and just the CIA and the State Department and the intelligence, American intelligence apparatus, and somehow through your exposure with Jonathan Pollard, and other things, God you fuck. have a very different idea and understanding of how our intelligence apparatus actually works. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's it. Because, that's good. because we should start with the idea that for a guy like me, I believe, I've always been raised to believe that the CIA and its affiliates are there to protect American interests abroad keep us safe from things like terrorism, espionage, etc., which I'm sure they do, full of patriots, hard work and Americans, good people. But but there is something called the industrial the military, military industrial complex, uh, military industrial complex. We have 50, we have five contractors, we used to have 30. When when power gets consolidated with these kinds of numbers, there does become an incentive structure. There does become of course. incentive to keep a war going, to start a war. I don't. I don't. I'm not saying that we do that necessarily. It's not that I reductive, am. but you might be. Yeah. So I don't know really where to start. I'm, I don't I, either, I'm just, dude. But you I'm and I've had <laughs> you and I have had some long conversations about this, yeah. and maybe we should start with what got you to write this story about Jonathan Pollard and give us. A little bit of background on him or start wherever yeah. you want i want to get into uh, the intelligence I want, to, I want to know why a director producer um and and a writer of and who's very good at what he does by the way thank you and you are Thanks, but why you wouldn't just leave it alone and just do what you do well but you had to poke the bear you had to stick your finger in the cage are you talking to my wife Is i'm talking yeah i'm talking she's i'm talking same fucking I'm, thing. yeah and and i'm talking to you and now you don't even live in the country no so no. go ahead <laughs> thanks dude, and, now I'm, and, and, and go and go yeah. um i dude i yeah i don't i bounced out of here three years ago and i haven't been back this is my first time coming back and literally flew in here under the cover of night to the United States. Yeah. And was just like, I'm here. And you're like, welcome to LA, buddy. And I'm just like, Hey, I'm coming right to you. Let's talk. Yeah. I, you know, while I, I was, you know, like the kid in, um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the one who's like, but father, I just want to sing. <laughs> and stop that, stop that, stop, stop it, that, stop, stop it. it. I've got yeah. music in me. And <laughs> but I just... I've got music in me. <laughs> and he shoots the arrow and it hits, you know, the message for you, sir. I love that. It's so great. But what uh, my father was army. Uh, he was 32 years LA County Sheriff's Department, 12 years undercover narcotics. Wow. Uh, six years special projects whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. And then uh, went into uh, corrections and retired in corrections. So he was actually out at the Wayside on a rancho, the Supermax facility out in Valencia. That's where he was. I'd imagine a real patriot. It's super, you what? So, and I've said this before, it's, it's kind of a dead horse, but it's still true. I was just down at this place in, in SoCal. Uh, I won't say where, so nobody can find him. No, I'm just kidding. But he, uh, 
you walk into the house and it's uh, Mormon Jesus. You were raised Mormon. Yeah, yeah. I was born and raised Mormon. Served a Mormon mission. Uh, uh, with a name like Adam Simon. Yeah. Couldn't get more like, biblical than could, that. Could, could it get more biblical? Yeah. Could it get more Mormon either? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, Southern Texas, Spanish speaking, it was a bilingual mission. So we would go between Brownsville, Texas and Mount Tomatoes, Mexico. Uh, my first marriage, I have two other kids, freaking amazing. Their mom's incredible, uh, but married in the Mormon temple. And then I worked for two years in, uh, 1999, uh, end of 1999 through 2001, uh, for the Mormon church's security department, uh, which was headed by Richard Bretzing, former head of the California FBI uh, LA office. So the Mormon Church's security department, much like a lot of these other places that we've discussed, Scientology, uh, you know, whatever, you name it, uh, even the Catholic Church, they have their own army. But Mormons, uh, intelligence communities love Mormons. They love them because they're patriotic, uh, mm. They believe the Garden of Eden is in Missouri. Yeah, they don't have right? a history of drug use usually. Don't have a, no, yeah. They, I mean, it's a, no coffee, tea, tobacco, drugs, premarital sex. So all these guys are just like, I love America Squeaky and I'll kill clean. for it. Yeah. You know, because they got to put that energy somewhere. So it's like, and so you get Brandon Flowers, lead singer of the Killers. You know, you get uh, Mitt Romney. You get, you know, or you get uh, Stephen R. Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Like mm. you get these kind of products of people that are either highly creative or highly successful. Um, so, but I left there. Uh, I have this history, Brian. This is what I do. I come into places. I see what's going on. I see the dirt. I fucking lean on the walls of the, the pillars of the temple. It collapses and I bounce. And the same things happen with Hollywood. But that, that happened with the Mormon church. They had a, a program whereby they were keeping tabs on all their members, very similar to Scientology and stuff like that. It was you know, just intel on people. But when you do that, then you have a record of people that are committing abuses that are in your ranks. And I was abused as a kid. I was physically and sexually abused by uh, two members of the church. And uh, there's records of that, and they kept records of it. And so these people would go on to abuse and do these hor horrific things, and nothing was being done. So uh, because if you're moving up in the organization, have a certain amount of money and power and influence, they're just going to continue to keep tabs until you're too out of control. Then, then we'll take you out. We'll take your head off. Very interesting. But, but until then... You keep doing what you're doing. We'll just manage. It seems like every institution, Everyone, when when left unchecked, follows same always follows the same pattern. The Catholic Church, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people have correlated their, our, our distrust for institutions in this country. We, we trace it back to the fact that the Catholic Church betrayed so many people's trust. Yeah. When you see, when you see how many priests were using the robe as an excuse to abuse children, it's it's actually unbelievable yeah it's nuts and then you look at the vatican and it's it's primarily you know that that french journalist who was gay came in and said it's a boys club there there are a lot of gay priests and then there are a lot of pedophiles and each one is holding each other hostage it's like this yeah. is what he wrote but he was like you know the, the pedophiles don't want anybody telling on them and the gay priests don't want anybody telling it, it's a weird weird thing but yeah but sorry, but th that does yeah. seem to follow every pattern. Every pattern. And that's the pattern. And, you know, is uh, now coming on, what is it now? 40, yeah, it would be 40 next year. 40 years of therapy, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> every day reduced to, you know, four times and then three and then two. And then now I check in with, hi, Renee. I check in, you know, with Renee, you know, every now yeah. and then I go, yeah, I'm doing good. And, and, and we go through stuff, but... I'm grateful for it because that pattern, just like going back to like Plato's cave, it's, it's a pattern that exists in exactly, I mean, you said it perfect. I don't need to rehash that, but coming out of that, every other organization is like that martial arts. Like I came out of that and, you know, leaving Mormonism, I'm going, okay, I got to throw myself into something. And yeah, I've led a very Forrest Gump, very strange, weird life. My brother was, uh, you know, training at the pit with John Hackleman and and Chuck Liddell. And Old school. Yeah, we moved out of. Old school. Uh, we moved out of uh, Lancaster, California, is where I was raised, by the way. Okay. Uh, which is Mars. Yeah. 
right? Blue it's collar, like Mars too, right? with meth. Yeah, yeah. And and Sereños. Yeah. Like that was it. Yeah. So you can get punched like, in the face very easily there. Yeah. So yeah. I was always sunbathing and anytime, you know, I was coming into school, people are like, you know, where are you from? And I'm like, oh man, you so like I leave us way. You know, like I'm, I'm like doing that. And they're like, get out of here. Yeah, what's with the blue eyes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, but we uh my father, uh, because of some of the things he was involved in, uh, had to move us. So we moved up to San Luis, and then my brother because he was so close to organized crime and things. Yeah, like Yeah, yeah, he did. He did a lot of work with uh, Hell's Angels and and stuff like that when he was working undercover narcotics. I, I remember when we, we were living in this uh, on this cherry farm. This uh, chopper pulls into the freaking driveway, and I'm like, hey. you know, little kid. And I'm walking. Who's coming to visit us? And I'm, I'm walking out and looking, and uh, I'm at the door. My mom answers it. And my dad comes through with his gun and sticks it out. Damn. And he goes, you got five seconds to get off my fucking property. And, it, and the guy's like, I just wanted to thank you for saving my life. You know, you, you helped me get clean and you got to do that. And he's like, how'd you find me? Like, how'd you find, like, I, would, I was here and I'm like, what's good? You know, who's he, dad? <laughs> you know, he seems like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. in the middle of the That's thing. a stressful way to live. Yeah, bro. So, you know, we, but it, it wasn't dangerous. This guy literally was showing up to go, hey, you busted me. Thank you. Mm. Um, but he, he moved us up to San Luis Obispo and, and then I started, my brother and I were bouncers at this place called The Library in, in San Luis Obispo uh, throughout high school. Uh, and, so, and that's where I started getting into security work. My father, when he retired, uh, went to work uh, doing privatized security. He worked Steven Spielberg's home detail, uh, Barbara Streisand for, for a number of years. He's actually on the, on, in uh, Barbara Streisand's wedding photo to Brolin. Uh, he's he's in the photo on the on the inquiry. Is that right? He's standing there. He called me. I was working at a Domino's Pizza, and he's like, "Go get the inquiry, dude." And I was like, "Why? What's going on?" And he's like, "Just go get it, check it out." Yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh, my dad's in the inquiry. That's great. Pretty cool, yeah." But he uh, and then got to go to Spielberg's house. My dad helped arrest the guy that uh, was the Berkeley professor yeah. with all the torture devices. Oh no, I don't he know that. Oh yeah. So this Wait. this girl was this guy was um, kept circling in the neighborhood, and it's. Well, but it's over near the Getty. Cruz is there. Goldberg's got a house there. Oh, this scene. is the guy was stalking Spielberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had torture? Uh, he was oh, a professor? Dude. He was a professor. He was a professor? Yeah, he was a professor. I thought he was yeah. just some weirdo. No, no, no. This dude was a professor. And, and he, he was had, obsessed with Spielberg. Yeah, he was obsessed with And he had torture devices. He had sexual torture devices in the trunk of his car. Not only that, he had maps of his house. He had pictures of his family. Had all kinds of and shit. And he wanted. He was obsessed with oh, Steven yeah. Spielberg. Yeah, was, was he a paranoid schizophrenic or just a, a guy who wanted to torture Steven Spielberg? I don't know. I don't, Jesus. I, I should have asked my... <laughs> I can, we'll get my dad on the pod. He's got Man. stories he can tell you all kinds Man. of Man, you deal with these... The, when you're a cop Crazy. like that, you deal with the under tapestry, the yeah. subterranean flow of the human psyche and, yeah. and 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 spirit, and it's a dark place to live. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't understand. My dad and I had a very tumultuous relationship growing growing up. Like we didn't. Yeah. And even into adulthood, it was still like you know uh, getting in each other's faces, going like, "What the fuck?" And what changed all that was working with him. Uh, he brought me into security, and so after I finished the church security stint, and I was kind of down and out. Uh, he's like, you know, you should you should work security, and so started a private security company, and then that's where the whole security aspect is. I did uh, six months with Mitt Romney, and uh, my my father did three. I did a month uh, with with Mitt Romney, but his detail was six months. Uh, in Africa for an organization called Right to Play. It was Steve Young's organization. So we drove around with him, interesting cat, uh, did, a, did a lot of like dignitary protection stuff. But I was the guy that was, like I said at the beginning, acting, going to school, you know, uh, doing, doing Gypsy, West dreamer. Side Story. <laughs> you know, da 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 Well, you know, it you sounds know, like you were, you were caught as I was between two things. One two is worlds. an artist's sensibility and, and, and being emotional and way more sensitive than you care to admit. And then also this overwhelming 
cultural baggage of having to be a quote unquote man. Yeah. You know, know how to know, know how oh, to dude. not be a bitch. If you get arrested in jail, yeah. know, know how to, you know, punch somebody in the face, throw a spiral, uh, uh, keep your emotions in check, all that oh, stuff that I exhausting, exhausting. <laughs> it's so when exhausting. I think back on my life, it's like, if only somebody had said, fuck off with the wrestling and all this bullshit, just be a great dancer and a singer and learn how to play the piano. You got moves by the way, dude. I'm I've very flexible. Some of the, I'm very the, flexible guys. I'm very limited. Not the point. Let's get back to No, you. I'll get back so to you. So you got, you got, the, 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 this is a long way of saying. Just, you, I know, I know the You were always on the, the outside world. looking in. I'm always on the outside looking and, and, in. And you, you somehow were always able to find where the injustices were on the, on the outside. So you, the, there, there, there's this circle and there were always these injustices, the fringes, something was going on, not, something was rotten in Denmark in any, yeah. in any. In any subculture, you find yeah, yourself. Yeah, man, and at. and maybe I'm part of MK Ultra. I mean, my mom was a guitarist. She, you know, cut an album when she was 18. She was going to do a thing with the Beach Boys, and my father was military. So maybe, who knows? Maybe I'm the product of that. You know, don't yeah. know. But but the you know the reality is is that doing security, I was the I was the weak link in the chain. I had the ability to sell the you know, clients and go like, Hey, you know, there's a beautiful story that I heard from this. Uh, I won't go on that tangent, but it is like the secret service agent who became Nancy Reagan's secret service, uh, uh, her guy until she died, mm. uh, noticed that she was taking medication all the time. And it, sometimes it was with an assistant. Sometimes it was with this person, that person. And he goes, why don't you let me hold on to that? And then, so every time she's like my pills, here you go. And then, so when they went to get rid of him off the details, she goes, who's going to give me my medicine? You're not getting rid of this guy. That attachment was there. So when I'd go out and do sales for security, I go, listen, all the travel stuff and the concierge shit that you're pressing on this 18 year old administrative assistant, we got you and we'll handle it better than anybody else. Uh, so we were successful at it, but I had to, I trained with progressive force concepts in Las Vegas, Nevada to get my personal protective service operator thing. And they're all army rangers, Navy seals did that for six months. Then I went out with the NYPD. I went through their entire counterintelligence, uh, program, uh, for four months. And then I went out and did a stint with the LAPD, got a multi-state concealed carry, like anything I could do to try to rise a little bit, to speak the vernacular, your the credentials the team that I was working with. Cause they were all way more qualified than me, way better, more intelligent, just, just better people. So, but that leads to coming out, coming out and, and, uh, the bottom fell out for me. I had gone through a divorce. I had to file for bankruptcy. I lost the business. There was a lot of shit going on 2012. Uh, and, uh, I ended up managing an apartment complex on Mariposa Avenue in Hollywood and it sucked and it was terrible. Managing and an apartment complex is is horrific. Not, <laughs> not and not there. It's not. It, it's <laughs> not, not there. the That's dream. Not the it's place. not the dream. No, it's you don't terrible. go to Hollywood to manage an apartment. No, right? but a lot of people end up there. It's all and good. I'm still going to to uh, acting classes. I'm looking across and I'm going. This guy's on this show. This guy's on that show. Yeah. This guy's doing this. Oh my God, Sean Penn. Sean Penn's coming in. And he's doing. He's doing a uh, 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 scene was that? study. True West. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm go, and Adam hop Sam up and Shepherd. I'm, I'm like, what the, this is insane. And then it's like, my pipes are leaking, you know, my, my husband's beating me up, you know, whatever. But the boss came in one day and he goes, uh, my nephew needs a job. You're out. And, and that was right when I was just barely every month, just squeaking by. And then it was done. And my kids were with me. We went down to the beach. We stayed a week, uh, just going, we were going camping down the beach and, uh, hmm. And, uh, yeah, so we went, we went down and Did you just um, get emotional just then. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it's just something that had I known what I know now, I, I really wish I could go that there is a regret. Huh. There's a massive regret. Like I wish I could. Like, I wish I could go back in time and like say, hey man, uh, this whole thing that you're chasing, this whole thing you're pursuing is fucked. Uh, it's not real. It's not real. And it's run by psychopaths and scumbags. Mm. And the gods that you're worshiping mm. 
hate you. Mm. You know? So like you're, you're going to get there and you're going to realize that. And all this time that you spent dragging your, your kids audition to audition, falling asleep on the floor of your acting class while you're doing this thing. You're forgiven. I know. We've, but, you're but in the sense of like... You don't know that when you're going through it. No. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I understand. And part of, part of understanding that, part of coming to the realization that these things are false gods is, is you've got to worship at them for a while and, and come up empty. <clears throat> and I really That's believe that. Gnarly. Now you can be blind, blind. You can, you can, you can say, I'm going to trust this book and I'm going to trust this, but it's not how you learn. You don't learn yeah. any other way than the hard way, especially when it comes to false gods. And, um, <clears throat> all of us are forgiven when we want to chase something that we feel is going to give us validation, success, love, community, sure. certainty, adventure. And that is exactly what Hollywood holds. It's you're also forgiven for being moved by movies where they, you know, you go to the, the theater to Dude, laugh and cry. Isn't it beautiful? You go to the movie to laugh and cry. When I saw Raging Bull, <clears throat> some kind of wonderful. Shit. When I saw these movies, Shit. Um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, for that matter. <laughs> right. Um, I I was so overwhelmed with, I don't know, uh, uh, I felt so deeply. And I said, I want to touch that. I want to do something. And hey, by the way, that's the same thing with certain Springsteen songs. When I would hear him sing live, I was like, when I heard him sing Johnny 99, I was like, who is this? And what is this? And I want to be, a, I want to be closer to this than, 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 than have my life be just a number at the end of my life. So you're a romantic and yeah. your kids, and, and when your you kids say may that, pay I that. It. I know that, dude. When you say, when, when, when that Brazilian amazing goddess goes, ah, you Pisces. Yeah, bro. I go, Gah. but it's the truth. But it's also part it's of your truth. strength. And, you yeah. know, somebody told me that my masculinity comes from my clowning, my silly, my, my, my humor. Instead of trying to be some tough guy, you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, 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 my heart always breaks for the world and I'm sensitive and I, and I love people. So I'm not going to apologize for that anymore, but, 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 but I'm sorry to, but, you're forgiven. This, you're forgiven. That regret is um, important because you wouldn't even understand what you're ta talking about if, unless you'd been through it. Yeah. And, and my, your kids will make the same mistake. Yeah. My, ki my kids are so freaking awesome, dude. My son's a guitarist. My daughter's a teacher. Uh, she went, uh, this is, this is all interesting. Sleeping in the car, watching my dad choke out a homeless guy, you know, at a bus stop. Like, let me go, let me go, uh, let me go into child education and psychology and figure out what this is about. This is about. And then my son's like, I'm just going to work it out here. <laughs> you oh, know well, what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, so guess what? Yeah, all yeah. of that was, was important and, and yeah. it was a gift to them. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. So you, so, and so, I, and, and so let get, me keep you yeah, on track. Yeah, so now you, you, you you realize that that's not what you want to do. You become a pretty successful producer, well, writer, well, brother, I director. I wrote Man Down. So do you know uh, uh, the P.F. Chang's on Wilshire, Santa Monica, right, right down in Santa Monica near the water? So right next door, that used to be an acting studio. It was called the... the uh, I remember which, it. Yeah, which is also part... Yep. Uh, everything's a kind of a cult in L.A. Yep. But, but yeah, it was uh, this acting studio. And uh, I was doing work there, so uh, installing kick plates on the doors, painting the rooms, vacuuming everything in exchange for uh, acting lessons, Meisner, because I couldn't afford it. Um, and I worked that out with the school. So for that, even even though it was a very strange, weird, fucked up environment, it was still I'm still grateful that they gave that to me, and uh, I was able to do that. But that environment's also realizing what Hollywood is is you're in there with, oh, you're this producer's daughter. You're this, you know, financier's guy. You're this yeah. studio's person. And they're going, who the fuck is this guy? This dude, this janitor. Like, get the fuck out of you're here. You're invisible you know? in Hollywood yeah, invisible. unless you're somebody. Yeah, yeah. And I wrote Man Down while at that school. And I was sleeping in a uh, couple nights in the parking garage but behind the school. Damn. Uh, Hunger. Yeah. at that last Who was summer. in Man Down? Gary Oldman. Uh, Shia LaBeouf. Jai Courtney. Kate Mara. Damn, bro. And that was out the gate. Damn. So I there's getting a, a movie made with those with that cast out the gates Fuck. and and that too then the what I thought was a lie now became true the dream I'm like it's real anybody can do, if I can make it here I can make it anywhere I can do this you know and 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 uh, I re I remember so I I was staying at this art studio. There's uh, uh, this artist, Gabriel Galt. Look him up. He's fantastic. Hello, Gabe. Love you. 
we were both sleeping in this, like it, it was a couch and easels. <laughs> like that was it, in a sink. Mm. And we were staying there and it was, it was behind uh, El Gran Burrito, uh, it, the same area like in Hollywood. And the night before uh, I got a call, this guy Patrick Hibbler is my producing partner now. He's amazing. And um, he's like, hey, man, we got to get you, get you out to set. And I was like, all right, cool. And he's like, all right, we'll send a car for you. Where do we send it? And I'm like, because eh. I didn't have a place the next day. So the next day, I just said, just come to El Gran Burrito at 2 a.m. and <laughs> scoop me up. So I just slept on, the, on, on a bench behind El Gran Burrito. And then I'm going from there and flying to New Orleans and walking into a scene that I wrote with 50 Marines doing Damn, jumping jacks bro. and just like, what wow. the fuck? <laughs> just like, what? That's crazy. It was an acid but what, trip. A, what a, what a, what a, what a, an affirmation to your talent. Well, I don't, at right. the time I just thought like, well, what does this mean as, had you studied writing? No, no. I went, but so, you loved movies. Love movies. I worked at, a, I worked at a Rainbow Video uh, yeah, on I remember top of Rainbow, doing all this stuff. I Rainbow, yeah, yeah. What and was I would, that? I would, was that in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and so I would just go. Okay, it's Mel Gibson night. Bam, and just like or Mel Gibson weekend. So you just, watched every movie. Every movie. Every movie. And then every wrote Man movie. Down. And and how I did that was I started getting scripts, and then just looking at the format and going, okay, so this is where the scene direction goes. Let me erase this and write my own shit. And then this is where the dialogue goes. Let me erase that and write my own shit. And then just doing that and then also workshopping with actors and, and just going, okay, read that. Yeah, that's bullshit. That doesn't sound yeah, right. When you hear garbage. It, yeah, garbage. Okay, let me change that. And then constantly like rewriting. But, um, you know, that, that script went through a crazy, crazy process as well. But I'm, I'm out at set and then meet Shia and he's, uh, he's in. Like he's in. Yeah, dude. And he's he's in. We my I've heard stories. My he, first he day throws on set, himself into bro, that. My role. first day on set, they got um, he's going. It's a boot camp scene, and they brought a real you know uh, marine instructor out there and said, "This is this is what we do, like the CQC stuff, and this is the obstacle course, and you're going to do it." All right, cool. He's in, so he's doing it. And then uh, <laughs> the producer Pat, uh, my buddy, he walks over and he goes. Okay, so uh, we got some lemon water in here for the pepper spray scene. So we're gonna we're gonna squirt. It's gonna sting, you know, a little bit. And he grabs him and he goes, "If you don't give me what they give them, I'm leaving the set, and you have no fucking movie. So what are you gonna do?" <laughs> and he goes, insane. And he goes, uh, and he goes on it and he goes he grabs and he goes can we clear this like is it, how do we do this and yeah. sure enough one of the marines is like i got you bro like you want to spray you the fuck get out down of yeah. let's let's party and when you watch the scene they fucked him up like they did the z and in the mouth oh and and you know he says okay this is what you're gonna do you're gonna do you ready yes sir okay on three eyes open oc oc you know he opens his eyes and they fuck him up he runs the obstacle course Gets to the end and has a little moment with his his buddy where they exchange a couple words. He's got his face on the fan, and and then Ditto Montiel, the director, is like, "Okay, that's cool. We got it. Like, we got it. We made sure we set everything. We got yeah. it. Okay, cool. On." And he goes, "Nah, like we got we, we I, no, we got to go." So two more times, and the crazy he's just, thing—he's a real masochist. But the crazy thing, back to one. <sighs> I've been sprayed. Like, I've done that no, shit. No, it sucks. I'm done for it days. Hurts. The Irish, Scottish yeah. genetics come out, yeah, and bro. I'm fucked. I look like I went eight rounds with Tyson. I'm yeah. fucking done. Yeah. So he did this like a G. And, but at the same time, we also had a very real conversation where he goes, I'm in this, man. Like, I'm, I'm going to go down. I'm going to sleep on the, on the beach because he plays a homeless veteran. So he's like, I'm going go, to go sleep on the beach tonight. I'm not going to the hotel. Like, I'm, I'm in it. I'm, I've been going to homeless shelters. I'm going to stay on the street tonight. You should join me. We should do it. And I go, well, dude, I'm doing that now. So the thread count on the sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Room yeah. service is yeah, paid I'll, I'll by production. That. This ain't a game for me. Enjoy. That's how I had to live. Enjoy pretend. Yeah, enjoy pretend. <laughs> I just slept at the Grand Burrito, and I don't have a place to what's stay. That, what's this that movie thing? Wraps. This famous story: Dustin Hoffman and Lawrence Olivier, and Dustin Hoffman's doing the method. My shit. dear boy, why don't you yes, just pretend? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. He's like doing marathon, man. He's staying up all night, and he goes, "Why don't you try acting, dear boy?" But listen, like, and we'll, now we'll go into Pollard, and I'll go, I'll go hard and yeah. heavy, and I won't deviate. But this is important because we went to the Venice Italy Film Festival. 
everybody always says this, there was a 10 minute standing ovation, you know, but I'm there. But also when I got there, my credit card was canceled. Uh, the shitbag producer, uh, one of the shitbag producers uh, on the film, brilliant people on it too. John Burton, uh, who did the Lego movies, Steve McAvity did Passion of the Christ, uh, John Shepard, Hunt for Red October, great people, professionals. This other, other scumbag uh, was in charge of the festival, got my name removed uh, off the list because she had an issue with me and wanted to give credit to a more esteemed writer that they mm. wanted to bring in and change everything. That didn't work out. So uh, I ended up sleeping on the beach the night before the film's premiere. She, got, she took away the room that I was supposed to stay in. So I didn't, I didn't have anywhere to sleep. Damn. No money, nowhere to sleep. Damn. In, in Venezia. Damn. Sucked. So I go down, I dig out from underneath the bungalow on one of the bungalows on the beach, and I slept there, you know, for the night. What the fuck? Yeah. And then I get up the next day, and just as the universe would happen, uh, Shia came walking around the corner, and he's like, where the fuck were you last night? And I was like, I got no room. I got no money. I'm not on the list. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, like, I I'm removed. And he's like, is this so-and-so? And I go, yeah. And he goes, come with me. And... The rest of the time, I was at, like at his side. Like he took me around in the car. His security details, my security detail. We walked into the premiere, and the shit bags' names are on the chairs. And he goes, throws it, and he goes, sit down. And like that was it. They had to fucking find a seat somewhere. And so he knew what time it was. And because of that, and I've gotten a lot of shit for protecting the guy, or not protecting the guy, but at least telling the story while he was going through his shit. But it's like. If somebody saves your life, which he did. You don't um, forget that. And then afterwards, I couldn't get work because he was canceled. Mm. I couldn't get work because I was, it's guilt by association. So now I'm fucked. And I'm going, I just climbed Everest. I'm like, the dream is real. And naked John Jones is standing there going, hi, welcome to hell. And then throws me down to the bottom of the, uh, of, of the mountain. So... If somebody saves your life, you, you can't forget that. It's like, and you also still hold people accountable, which I did. I'm like, hey, man, what's the fuck's going on? You know, what's happening? Um, and, you know, and to his credit, he's done the work. Like, he's hugged the cactus. He's done all that. So after that, the next, you know, where this leads to Pollard is, and, and also because of this, was uh, Joe Carnahan. Uh, he called me up and he goes, he goes, that movie got a bad rap. That's a bad, bad fucking rap. And he goes, and I believed it. I thought it was dog shit. And there's the kid. Um, but uh, he goes, I want you to come in and pitch. He goes, come in and pitch for some movies. I, other writers are coming in. You're going to have to beat them out. Uh, or maybe you don't, but I'm going to give you that shot. Like, come in and come in and pitch. I went, fuck yeah. So I came in. So those you, Joe, Joe Carnahan. Did Smoke and Aces. He the did gray, the A-Team. Narc. He did The Gray. He did Narc. Yeah, he's a yeah. hell of a... He did Boss Level. He's a fucking amazing writer-director. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. And we we spent weeks uh, as writing partners just banging out scripts. Wow. Banging out scripts. Wow. Just going... And that's not an easy task. No, not with that, not with that guy. He can write yeah. fast. But, so but that wasn't education. Yeah. And then uh, we did Point Blank. And again... Anthony Mackey, who I Anthony love. Anthony Mackey's a... I don't know him, but I love him as an, I just, oh, just the awesome. best human yeah. you could possibly ever meet. He's incredible. Yep. Anything, you know, the director's like, Hey man, you know, there's like fake glass on the ground. It's dirty. And he's like, where do you need me? You need me to lay down on that shit? Hey, yeah, hundred percent. Boom. He's there. Like, let's go. Like any action, anything that's happening, he didn't give a fuck. And, um, I come out of that. I made uh, like under a hundred K. For writing that movie. And if anybody thinks that's a lot of money, try living in Los Angeles. Try living in Los Angeles after for two taxes years. and commission on a hundred K. Enjoy that shit on a hundred K. Enjoy that. And that's after agent manager. Yeah, that'll last you about about two months. Yeah, and you go out to dinner twice and you're fucking broke. Yeah, and we get the numbers call, and which I was blessed to be on. They usually don't include you know writers on there, but I got on there and they're like 197 million independent downloads in the first two weeks. And I'm like, what? And then when the Netflix scandal happened and they released the real numbers of what shit yeah. was doing, when they were like, Manifest is the number one show in the world. Everyone's watching that. Bullshit. Yeah. Nobody's watching yeah. that fucking Nobody's show. Watching Nobody cares show. about that fucking show, but you're pimping it out because you spent so much money yeah. uh, in the acquisition. 
So the numbers come out and we find out it's the sixth most watched film in Netflix's history. Wow. And I'm going, the fuck, man? So this leads to Pollard because I was getting offers to do work and, and to do things. And I, I just started saying yes to everything. I was like, yep. I was like, you got a horror film that's being shot in Brazil? Yep, I'll, I'll write it. I'll, I'll produce it. I'll help you get 250K. Let's, let's go do it. I just started saying yes to anything, but it was based on the people that were putting it together and, and whether or not uh, I, I had the right energy and vibe and there was no scumbaggery. Because filmmaking, we, we were talking about this before, is money laundering. That's it, plain and simple. Hmm. Hollywood is a, is, a, is, is a, and I said this to you, and you know this, I think you know this better, better than anybody, certainly better than anybody in your circle, uh, is that uh, Hollywood is Epstein Island on a, on a state level. It's state funded. Uh, the CIA is, and I've heard people who I disagree with politically and philosophically say this, and it pains me to agree with them, but I am in agreement. Uh, the CIA and its subsidiaries are the biggest financiers in Hollywood. Now that's changing. Now it's starting to be China, Russia, Brazil. So can you can you can you unpack that for us? For sure. The CIA is is the largest financier of a lot of movies in Hollywood. You, used to be. Used uh, to be up until I'd say about uh, three years ago. Because they Remember wanted pro American. They wanted like, pro American. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in other words, how would they, they would they, they would set up a subsidiary company. They'd look mm -hmm. at the script and say, this is Absolutely. good for America. Yeah. I, even a lot of people don't realize that, but the CIA, um, has a lot of for-profit companies Yes. in tech, Yes. And, and, which I never knew. <laughs> yeah. And they're for-profit companies in tech and things like that. And, uh, and that's one of the ways they exert influence yeah. in, in things. That's fascinating. I can't believe it's legal. But and, and also this is why monsters, uh, stay protected and why they cart out a trophy every now and then. So you get, so this is all, cause so you, I would always have said, this is all conspiracy bullshit. And except and for, I got the receipts. Like, you have that's the receipts. The problem. Yeah. The problem is, is there's enough kind of smoke for people like, uh, I love all these guys, by the way. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mad digester of their shit. But guys, you know, fucking, you know, what, what's his name? Tim Dillon? <laughs> yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah. Tim's great. <laughs> I fucking love him. I watch his shit. But some of these other guys that are a little more out there. Yeah. And, and you go, I can see why you would say that. But the fact of the matter is you're dealing in propaganda. Propaganda in church organizations, martial arts organizations. We know some of the same hack fucking jujitsuists and, and guys that are just like star fuckers and doing their thing. Right. And I got no problem putting those people on blast because it's, it's a joke. You're giving people a false hope and they're mixed in with the real deals. Hmm. So you get like a guy like Keanu Reeves, Gary Oldman's a gem, by the way, like, thank God. I was like, thank God you weren't like in the middle of our, you know, read, you weren't like, Hey, check it out. It's like a, a dog you know, fucking, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever mm. sick shit, you know, and I'm, it, but just a gentleman, but they're mixed in. Like that's how uh, they're mixed in with the, with the scumbaggery. But even on man down that happened as well, where we met with, with individuals from the military. Cause we're trying to check if our shit is legit yeah. and we want to make sure that it's buttoned up and they're going, we love it, man. This is great. Hey, but if you change the ending, so he actually doesn't die. And that spoiler alert, and that you he gets the therapy and 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 just you you remember American Sniper, right? Like remember how he was getting help from his community and all this stuff and blah 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, but that's not the reality. Kyle got that help because he was a prize pony, because the government has a ventured interest in fucking Navy SEALs and special forces operators not going off kilter. Like, so they'll throw whatever resources and pay, they'll pay those bills. But these grunt marines that are coming home fuck them you know two, 250,000 homeless veterans 250,000 plus suffering from gulf war sickness and now we're getting to pollard from something that the united states made well i read some of the letter receipts and the letters <laughs> yeah know, the idea that that the chemical weapons and even biological weapons that saddam hussein used on the kurds were made or at least the 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 starter agents yep. were created in American labs on American soil, and yeah, then sold and, to yep. sold to the Iraqis, 
And by the way, in the back door, we were also doing an Iran-Contra deal. Yep. Where we were also selling the Iranians weaponry. And going now in that was blamed on a drugs. rogue element in the in the yeah, CIA. Yeah. We should at least say, right? So that's the thing. It's if I come to you, Brian, and I say, uh, "Hey, I need you to make sure that that camera gets dissembled," but you can't do it, and no one can know that I told you to do it. And nobody who works with you, you know, this bearded, handsome gentleman, he, can, he can't touch it. But you could definitely get, you know, the guy using the leaf blower across the street. Might, but that's an idea. You might want to use him. Here's all the money you need. Go get it done. Like, that's the setup. Like, as basic as, as I can put it. And if anybody wants to have this conversation with me online, I could show them all this shit, then fine. Like, we could do it. I have the receipts and any... Any of the, uh, so the, so, so the, so the, any, and so the I'll, CIA, I'll for any lack of, the, of a better, yeah. so the intelligence apparatus in this country sure. is involved in financing the movies they want to see get made. Yeah. I've heard this before. Absolutely. And, um, be, because they set up companies and the person making the movie may have no idea that this company is investing in their movie for reasons this that have to do more that with propaganda, true. right? Yeah, that that's the where conspiracy theorists would say it's all linked. It's not. It's like compartmentalized so that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand there is. There are a doing. lot of conspiracies though, right? Because then then you've got a lot of people say, "Well, the Jews were the ones that right, run right, right. Hollywood and they put only Jews and and without thinking that there's a tradition of art in the Jewish community and For they sure. were all, you know, it was supported by their families and the culture has always pushed that as a, yep. but, but you, so there, there are all these different things. My, I always come down to, and I want to get into Pollard. I always come down to the idea that you've got to have, the, the idea in the movies is there's a cabal of men who go, we're going to take over the world. Yeah. Not, not so right. No. A little bit more, a doesn't, little bit more. You've got, like you can that. have patriots who say you, you can have creative people within the intelligence community who say, we're, we have these, we have these private companies we're going to set up. So we are privy to what's going on in AI. We're privy yeah. to what's going on in, in X, Y, and Z. Yep. We want, um, we want the military to look good. We want it. We want, we want to be able to make our recruiting efforts a lot easier. easier. So yeah. we're going to we're going to finance the kinds of movies like Top Gun that showcase America and the military in a heroic light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can totally understand I can and get see that. That, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. There's a dark it, side? Yeah. And, and even going back I'm going to pee. To, Hold yeah, this. Man, no, pee, Hold pee, this. Pee, I got to pee, pee out of my huge dick and then we'll I'll be right back. <laughs> It's, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. And brother, how much time do we have so I don't I don't stay here for a million years and kill yeah, you guys? Yeah. Really? Yeah, Fuck yeah, let's right go. Because right. I'm going to get into the shit right now. Now we're going to go. Now we're going to go. I got, uh, but we needed max, some background. At max, I got like an hour, hour, 20 minutes left. Be, be okay. below that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be way below that. Because I've, yeah. Yeah. I, no, no. I left. I moved to Thailand. Uh, we we lived there for a while. Uh, then we moved to Brazil, and then we we have been hopping around. So Israel, Greece, just uh, not staying in one place for too long. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, we've been we've been everywhere, and and really trying to go, like okay, we're gonna go to this place. What's the work? Like, what, can I get a script writing? Can I do this? Can I do that? And then we'll hop to that place and then we work. And, you know, she's working as well. And then we'll go to the next place and work. So and you completely exited. Home. I'm done. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, still making movies. Yeah, like, yeah. I, got a, I got a film fund. Got the AI filmmaking company. Got a series coming out. Got movies coming out. And that's the illusion. The illusion is you have to come here. You have to be a part of this thing. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, the you don't have to live in LA to make movies right. like what was the what was the number one uh, if, you, if you could have gone back in time six years and said pulled in all the studio heads and said I got something to tell you the number one show in the fucking world is going to be all in Korean with a bunch of no-name Korean actors <laughs> they would have laughed at you and thrown you out of the fucking building but all it's right. squid game yeah. yeah and but it keeps going 
these last train to Busan, the fucking parasite, like it keeps going. So the illusion that you have to be in Hollywood to make movies is horseshit. And I'm yes. doing it. Yes. Like, yes. And these creative communities around the world, dude, I've just been an expat. We bounced everywhere. I've Let, been all over. The let's come back. Yeah. 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 So intelligence. So, so I have a bigger question Yeah. and I don't even know if you can speak to it. Okay. But we're going to get into Jonathan Pollard, and I want to get into that. But You can ask me anything. Though. Yeah, but well, I want to get into the bigger question, which is if they do that, and they have private companies mm -hmm. that, that in, in an indirect way or a direct way push American interests forward mm -hmm. or in favor of America, um, or, um, do, do you think it's feasible that because there's so much money in war... There's so it's much one money. Export. It's our number it's one, number export. one export. There's it, the, the incentive is there. I'm not saying it happens, but the incentive would be for our intelligence apparatus to instigate conflicts. They do. Yeah. So th th this is where I think this is what I'm very That's interested where it gets in. Fucked. Are, because I have heard through people I know who are in the intelligence community who are really real people. You speak, real people. You'd speak into some, and that was another reason that I didn't mention of why I reached out. You've, 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 uh, oh yeah. 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 Fuck it. Here we go. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I have, I've there's been, a, there's a couple people that are making the rounds that are CIA plants. And I don't mean that in like a, hey, he's a plant, he's an industry plant. I mean, they're on fucking payroll. And I know that for a fact. Yeah. And they're coming on these shows and going, we got to go to war with Russia, man. That's what we got to do. We got to protect Ukraine. We got to do this thing. And I'm going, this guy's really excited about this. Why is he so excited about this? By the way, he needs to see a dentist. What's going on with this dude? And, and then, and I just gave away who he is. So if... If I trace it back and I go, oh, got it, He's, and make a couple calls and go, what's this guy's MO? Who's he associated with? And then it's like, okay, listen, I'm not some fucking, you know, connected dude. I'm just like Tom, Cl Tom Clancy got scooped up by the CIA because he wrote a script about a silent sub. A silent nuclear sub. Yeah, and he and they're like, and how'd they you know about the silent? His fucking ass. How'd you, how'd you know about that silent sub? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It, it, there, there are people talking. And talk. that's all I've done. People that's talk. That's it. People talk. And people talk. But there are people making the rounds that are pushing narratives. And this is well, where- Well, my, my, my experience has been with, with people who- But you've talked would, to some real people. Yeah, you've who know better. You've had real people on this thing. Yeah, and, and yeah. The, what, I'm, what I glean is that, is that we're involved in doing things that- you could make the argument actually instigate, exacerbate a situation where there's a where it makes the other side almost uh, it puts the other side in a position where they almost have to react. They have to in a military way. Absolutely. Now that's pretty cynical, and, and I, I I I have I hope I'm wrong. I'll lay it out. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I mean the you know I. I I think the best way that I could say it, and it's the best analogy that I can have, is that, and I, I keep saying CIA, I keep singling them out, and you are correct, and I think it's important to say, and I'm so glad you said it, because I don't usually do that. I go right to the bottom of the barrel. But there are the patriots, hardworking, dedicated uh, individuals that are working that job, man, at the, at the FBI. I've spoken to these people. And I'll also say part of the reason I left the country is because I've been involved. I've been involved in two FBI investigations that, that deal with Hollywood and have uh, contributed to putting scumbags on hooks, uh, too. Now, snitches get stitches. I understand all that shit, but I don't... We're, we're talking about monsters. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about, you know... Uh, I, I, we're talking about actual fucking monsters, but the but the rule of law in that situation is that that fish is on a hook, and any fishes that brought that fish to the hook are safe and at peace because the monster's on the hook. Unless that fish gets a bigger monster yeah. that gets put on the yeah. hook, then you're fucked. Yeah, which is exactly the situation I found myself in. So L.A. became not the the best of environments to stick around in, uh, but. Uh, you know, I 
still, you know, doing my thing and creating. I was, I'm, I've always been able to create because if I can't create here, I can create anywhere in the world. Yeah. And that's why I went international. See, but because of the, 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 the apparatus, the yeah. intelligence apparatus, the reason, the connection, they're inseparably connected to Hollywood and Washington. This idea that Hollywood is at war with Washington. Look at George Clooney raising all this money for this motherfucker. They're all together, baby. And, and Hollywood functions in this way the same way that these guys do, that you have lovely people and lovely artists and craftsmen and, and you, you know, these guys. You get guys like, like your, your buddy, Todd Phillips. You get Keanu Reeves. You know, Keanu Reeves is a, it, he sat down with me for two hours and read the shittiest script I've ever written, and I knew it was a bad. Good guy, a, good, a good guy. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you have now, there's these, some great artists. And yeah, some great, and you, yeah, you have these great and great producers. Yeah. You have these great... Uh, really wonderful people, Kathy, Kathy Conrad, who uh, produced uh, Walk the Line yeah. and is working on this. And she's a great, great lady. So, you know, you have these people, but the system is set up to uh, be built on the losses and to be built on debt and to be built on money laundering and to be built. The structure is one where psychopaths can rise to the top very quickly and have unchecked money, power, and influence. And the intelligence apparatus is very much the same way. The people that are, I love, I love my Jesus, I love my God, I love my country, I've, read, I've got the Constitution right here in my pocket, I'm gonna read it for you. It's like, sold. We have a position for you, it's front desk receptionist. It's the hostess. You know, that's what you're doing, you're out in front. And we'll put you on some special projects. Why don't you walk Mr. Clooney to his room? That'll be nice. That's how the intelligence apparatus is set up. And then the people in the back, like the security team, that's like, who's this guy? Okay, let's take him out back, fuck him up, and take his wallet. You know, the bouncers at the club. You know, those are guys. Yeah, there's that, that real, there's that real politique, thing. right? There's yes. that. My, my my thing is that a lot of times it feels like there's just a, w a war of ideas. There there is an there is a there is a an argument, an intellectual, philosophical, political argument that one can make for supporting Ukraine sure. and bleeding Russia Absolutely. dry on the battlefield of Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I could understand that the interests, there are certain interests in, in our intelligence apparatus, certainly in our political parties, that say it would be madness not to support Ukraine for X, Y, and Z reasons. It's a different that. argument. Sure. Now then they use, they leverage their, they leverage their, their contacts who are sympathetic to their points of view in the intelligence community. Yeah. And that group wins the day. Yeah. So so sometimes is it isn't it just isn't it just people it's who are they just have a they just they just see the world that way and they're going to use their influence to get their yeah. way, right? Yeah, the structure is set up so that if you operate a certain way, you are now in the reward system that leads you to the top. Mm. So it, the system is set that way. It's like Netflix's algorithm, which I talked about on the other yeah. podcast, right? Like or YouTube's algorithm, or yeah. or, or, or the, the way this election is being handled, yeah. where Kamala to, Harris is, it's, has one hundred percent of the mainstream media, yeah, was Soviet style whitewashing her record and pushing her forward. Guys, it's like, can you just be a little honest? You're telling me two plus two is eighteen. It's insane. You're gonna lose me. It's and, and I, you know, I hope independents know enough to see that they're being manipulated I, by a bunch of people who went to the same colleges, read the same books, come from the same zip code, come from the same socioeconomic status and, and have a vested interest in pushing somebody to the front that they agree with that's, that pays no price for being wrong. Trump just makes them very uncomfortable. I'm not saying you have to like Trump. There's a no. lot to not like about Trump, but it's but very, yeah. it is, it is. It is this lateral cooperation between big tech, Hollywood, is and and yeah, and 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 the media is just like what what the fuck is going on, you know, guys? It's scary. You know what I love about you in particular is you and I have the same weakness. We have the same kryptonite. Mm. Is what you just said, which is I hope independents think you know, but the American people would never. Yeah. The people would never tolerate. Yeah. Yes, they would. Yeah, they yes, would. they absolutely would because they're too fucking dumb. And that is the truth. And it's not their fault that they might not even dumb. be too dumb. They just realize that there's nothing they can do about it. Well, you know, all That's of us, the key. all of us are getting Votes? to a point where, where my vote means nothing and my government doesn't represent me. Right. 
So now what? And and I keep hearing these people. I heard this guy on uh, Sean <clears> Ryan. <throat> Uh, one, uh, one to use a uh, Blackwater guy. Yeah, gets on there and he goes, "You got to get involved." Eric in Prince. Local legend. Yes, he did the yes. podcast. Yeah, yeah, I know Eric. Yeah, so he gets on there and he goes, "You know, you got to vote. You got to get involved." The, these are true statements. They ain't gonna move the needle. They ain't gonna move the. The needle. only thing that's gonna State work is if, 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 if the we federal vote, government is not gonna move. If the people needle. start voting in primaries, sure. If you really take primaries seriously, then then you'll get your candidate up. Otherwise, the the the, the establishment just yeah. goes. That's adorable. Andrew Yang, R.F. Kennedy Jr., hilarious. this is adorable. Yeah, hilarious. You guys are so cute that you want to... Joe Rogan is, 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 is going to endorse Robert F. Kennedy Jr. All good. You guys do all that. The operatives know what's really what time and it is. And they also know who's going to be president. Yeah. And they think, they think it's going to get shooken up. It's not. That's, that's the thing. They push these guys forward and give you the illusion of choice. And then you just go, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden. And like you made that choice. Yeah. You didn't make that choice. That choice was made for you yeah. already. And then when you go to the ballot box, that choice is made for you. So when they say, well, that's, you know, and I'm not talking about rigging elections. I'm talking about stuff that even goes beyond that. And where this, this is a pattern that I'll give of an example for the CIA and the FBI and parts of the DOJ, not all of it, but it's this, it's that you got two multimillionaires in tech driving down the road together, coming up with ideas as they drive into Silicon Valley. One of them is the son of the uh, Secretary of Education for the United States. The other one is the grandson, great-grandson. It's not the son, is it the brother? Uh, the, the, brother the brother. Eric Prince, yeah. Oh, oh no no not Eric. That's the DeVos you're talking about. No 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry. So you, you'll see. So it's a, so that's one of the guys. Uh, the other that's, guy. That's 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 Adam's Liam. One and a half that's year old. Like, no, you can go. You can who come is who you is? Come get him, come get him, buddy. The kid's no, a giant. The kid's a giant. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. He's awesome. He's so he's so Brazilian. He's awesome. <laughs> he's so big. He's gonna be. He's gonna be. Oh, he'll be representing. He'll be representing uh, Brazil in weightlifting. That's exactly. In right. the heavyweight weight weightlifting department. Very heavyweight. Um, so th this guy's uh, father's former secretary of education. The his co-pilot in the car uh, is the uh, great grandson of Sigmund Freud, mm. and the nephew. Of, of Edward Bernay, the guy who wrote the book yep. on propaganda yep. for the CIA, for the CIA, yep. for, for the CIA, for the FBI. Yep. He's the guy you go into the movie theaters and you're, you're watching, you know, whatever in the, in the previews and it's saying you're hungry, you're thirsty. He got you're women late. to smoke. He got women to freedom smoke. Torches. Chesterfield. He said he got the, the bacon industry or the pork industry said, is, hey, is the we best want thing uh, for breakfast, you. Is, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Those two guys go, we need to create an algorithm that keeps people hooked. And all of a sudden, they have unlimited money and financing and everything to do it. That's Netflix. Mm -hmm. Those are the founders of Netflix. Those really? are the guys who created the algorithm for Netflix. What? Yeah. yeah and I look, do the Googles. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> wait okay. Yeah. Okay. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Now, now, okay, but, I, yeah. but that's interesting because I... I, I was critical of Netflix, and then then they then they put the Tom Brady roast on. And then they they stood behind Dave Chappelle, and I was like, I like these guys. No, that part of it. Yeah. So again, front yeah. desk receptionist. Yeah. Front desk receptionist. Uh -huh. We're on your side. Uh huh. Look at the Lego Movie, right? What's the Lego Movie like about? I don't know. So you watch it. You would if you're a juvenile like me and just watching cartoons. All the time. Right, right. But like the Lego Movie, John Burton, uh, who produced Man Down, produced all the Lego movies. And I met with him yesterday because we're going to do, do a project together uh, that you're in, motherfucker. So we, we, uh, we're, but we're, we're talking and he goes, what people didn't realize is that it's the Legos protesting the establishment. Like they're saying, bring down the establishment, you know, bring down this thing, bring down this, this palace, this, this whole system of doing things, this uh, monopoly, this... Uh, corporation, capitalism yeah. run amok. Uh, Legos are telling uh, you to do interesting. this? Legos. So there's, there's yeah, there's all <laughs> the this largest, propaganda. The there's largest, the largest, these... you know, the toy yeah. conglomerate. Yeah. Mattel, you know, whatever the toy, toy yeah. company is, is telling you to go against the establishment. So same thing in Hollywood. They're saying like, hey, we're supporting these artists. Look at us. We're doing great. And on the flip side of that with Chappelle and what you're saying, Tom Brady, they do the same with Woke. They go, on the, they go on the other side yeah, of that and go, oh my God, man, we, I, I don't know what happened. We did the all-female Ghostbusters and it just tanked. I don't know what the fuck happened. They, it, that's by design. 
It's by design because they have to have losses. And so what better way than the motherfuckers that are picketing and protesting about diversity and inclusion and all this stuff that we give them what they want so they'll go away because it fails. That's why. You know what scared the shit out of everybody? Black Panther. Scared the shit why? out of Why? Because everybody. it did well? Well acted. Well shot. Story was fucking fantastic. Acting was phenomenal. Cinematography is great. It's like Captain America Winter Soldier. That's an incredible film, period. It's a spy thriller. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. got, it's got guts. It's got heart. Uh, it's in there. Black Panther scared the shit out of everybody because they're like, oh shit, all black cast did really well. We're, it's killing the game. We can't have that. That can't happen. So, and is that an individual at this one organization who's saying that? Sure. But by and large, none of these motherfuckers want these things to succeed. Why? Because then it goes into everything. Then everything's got to got to be that way. There's um, I, I, there's another there's another movie, um, Madam Web. I mean, Madam Madam Web's budget is fucking ridiculous. Dakota Johnson didn't even want to be there. She said, "This is her own words." She's like, I, "I don't know. I just fucking wanted to do it." The other gal from Euphoria goes, "I did it just because I wanted the relationship with Sony. Like that's why I was here. I don't I don't know. The movie sucks, but that's why I was here." Have you ever heard actors on a panel talking about a hundred fifty fucking million dollar movie no. that way? That's insane. Like that's clinical. But they knew what time it was. We're gonna get the biggest paychecks in the fucking world, and we're gonna have this relationship relationship with the studio uh road runner road runner movie john studios Cena. are losing their, their they're shirts losing stuff. their asses yeah but some of that hollywood's losing their ass hollywood's hollywood's their starting asses. to disintegrate and uh, again another reason why the bullseye on on my back is because i went y y the studios all want to press a button that's labeled ai where they can just create homogenized algorithmic based storytelling good luck at the push of a button good luck so let's go, let's jump so yeah, into, Pollard. now Now we're at Pollard. Yeah, yeah. You, you write this script about Jonathan Pollard, who was arrested for espionage for treason. Yeah. He sold the Israelis our, um, the, the, way, the, the, the codes for how the CIA communicates. Yeah. So, the, so they, the Israelis were able to see everything that was coming in. And he not, gets caught. Yeah, he gets caught. He gets thrown in jail for life. He does Without 32 trial. years. Yeah. Directed he does 32 yeah. years. I think Obama pardoned him. Uh, Obama started the process, and then Trump came in, and it got delayed. Why did got, Trump got, pardon him? It got wrapped because up because of the Israeli Trump... connection, and he's pro-Israel. Or... No, he knew what time it was. I mean, this this guy. Uh, the quickest way, I think, is is just what Pollard was about and what he really did. I mean, the there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of disinformation. The only reason I know this is, look, I've I've looked at everything, and I've already, you know. I got scooped up by State Department, so like they already know I know everything and, and saw some things that maybe I shouldn't have seen and talked to some people maybe I shouldn't have talked to, but whatever, I fucking talked to them and, and put this thing together because I think people need to know. Um, this is important because the producer contacted me. We had done some other projects together, and any of these yahoos in these circles that are running around saying, you know, the Jews run Hollywood and all this other shit, really, because I was on a project an executive producer, and it's the same producer, this guy, Daniel Finkelman, uh, who came to me for uh, Pollard. Uh, we did the performance together. Uh, it was a, a movie where Jeremy Piven uh, played the lead. It's the best performance I've ever seen Jeremy do, period. Hands yeah, he down. got rave reviews. He's out of control. Tap dancer, I think. Out of control yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And, and by the way, had broken ribs while he was doing these yeah, like dance he sequences. He can act, and that guy can fucked. act. And just acted his ass off, and we did this movie. And it's about a guy, it's based on the Arthur Miller play, who has to perform, he's a, he's a Jewish man, he has to perform in front of Hitler. It's insane. And can't, can't get it out there, can't get it done, can't get it, it's getting blocked at every, every freaking level. Same thing happened on, on the project that I was on uh, one day in October, which is about survivors, uh, people who survived, some people who didn't, the families of people who didn't. Uh, the October 7th attacks by uh, Hamas in Israel. I went to Israel, spent time there, went to Be'eri, went to the went to these places, spoke to these people for months. I wrote four episodes, uh, and then the mission of the the kind of philosophy behind what this show should be started to shift. So I went, I I did that. I stand by what this is because we shot it. 
shot in Israel, done, in the can. I believe in it. It's not political. It doesn't take a side on anything. Beautiful stories. Uh, there's this kid from Gaza who runs over to try to save his buddy who he's kicking a ball over the wall with every day. Yep, but bring uh, me back to Pollard. Yeah, and this and this is this is Pollard. Okay. So anybody who's saying Jews run Hollywood, you would think these would get green lit and be up on on a fucking billboard on Sunset Avenue, and we we can't get anybody to fucking look at it. So mm. there's that. Wow. Um, but now, uh, day in October is being distributed. It's bought. Uh, Fox Fox has it and kicking it out. We're going to see this sometime in October, um, and and it'll be out there. And I'm currently on the, you know, uh, on the, doing that. Oh, I see. Uh, You're making the point. That, yeah. yeah you and can't, so yeah. where this comes is Daniel goes. Listen, I got the, I got this thing. This uh, two and a half years ago, because I got this thing. It's with Jonathan Pollard, and I was like you when we first talked. I I read it and I go, oh, this guy fucking traitor. Like, what's going on? I'm like, fuck this dude. And and then I went out to Israel. Uh, I met with him and started going through. Now, what he found out and what was happening in the environment at the time is there was a, a very evil individual, Aldrich Ames, who was a legit spy, responsible for the deaths of countless fucking people. Drunk and all that. Oh, I've... horrific. But he went to jail. Didn't he went he? to and jail. Died, yeah, died. they got that motherfucker. Yeah. But th there's that guy, and then there's all these people that facilitated not just Iran-Contra, but the... S sale and distribution of, of narcotics in the United States through the CIA. So the CIA is looking to finance this arms deal. So they go down and purchase a bunch of blow and traffic it. This is the CIA doing this. And they bring it into the United States and they're using that drug deal, massive fucking drug deal, and proliferating drugs throughout African American communities in the United States in the form of crack cocaine in order to facilitate, to finance how sh how, this deal I've heard over this here. Before. Is this, do we have actual receipts for this? We do. Pollard does. He does. He does. And he I've does. seen it. And some of the stuff that you've seen, which is okay, because you can find <laughs> some of the stuff. I, I did a dump on you, and you're like, hey, motherfucker, don't send me shit. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. but, but yeah, so that environment's going on, and there's these people like, uh, uh, you know, Kasogi, Manager Gabbana for an Iranian arms dealer, like, like gnarly motherfucker. Like, I met his nephew in Qatar, and we sat down, and I was like, all right, like, tell me what's really going on like what, what really happened it, so a lot of people when they're doing research and what the CIA is set up in Hollywood is they want you to go talk to well this was the agent in charge of the Pollard investigation this was the this was the prosecuting attorney this was this they have full knowledge of this thing I'm like nah I want to talk to Pollard's cellmates when he was in jail I want to talk to the guy that was running the arms deal like I want to talk to all the people that are involved right wrong whatever like i want to i want to talk to the to you know the guy who's sitting with ronald reagan uh sitting in the oval office and casper weinberger is going we cannot be involved in the sale of these weapons sir like this is this is this is crazy shit like we can't we can't do this and he's going emmanuel lewis who the fuck yeah casper who's emmanuel lewis of uh, webster sir you know this is a real fucking conversation because he's about to sit down at this event with Webster, and he has no idea who he so is. He's not even thinking about. And then when it jogs his memory, he starts singing the goddamn theme song to Webster during a, a briefing about we got to make sure you have plausible deniability, sir. Wow, crazy shit! You wow. can't make this shit up. Wow. And so, so I'm getting those kinds of details, and then I'm writing it. Well, there's people that are looking at the script, going, "Hey, how do you know this? You know, how do you know this?" And then that gets passed to people that they're talking to going, we got a problem. Like this dude's talking to people that maybe he shouldn't be talking to and getting information that he shouldn't have. And that's, that's why I get, you know, uh, rolled up by uh, legal attache to the state department who questions me for three days. I love the legal attache to yeah. the state department. Yeah. That's it, dude. Yeah. That's, that's just, I can take you anywhere in the world and nobody's going to fucking know card. That's, that's who I am. And, so, you know, Pollard, what, what actually transpired is this man's father was a, a professor at Notre Dame. He's an American, you know, Texas freaking 
Pollard? He, yeah, Pollard. Love, loved America. He's Jewish by religion. But you but kind American. of like, you in, in the pilot, you kind of established that he also had great loyalty to Israel. And his, Very mother, his mother instilled that. And she was like, For sure. you're, you're Israeli first almost, right? Yeah, yeah. And she did that. And yeah. that's the duality of like immigration. That somebody comes here, you know, and they're like, I'm an American, I love America. But the second they get in the boxing ring, they're flying Mexican flags and wearing, you know, have a yeah, mariachi there, there band. Was a lot out, of, there know? was a lot of that talk when you looked at the um, American Enterprise Institute. Yep. If you looked at other, a lot of them were right wing kosher Jews who were the architects of the Iraq invasion. Yes. And so you've got people who, and a lot of them studied at University of Chicago, right? So you have Paul Wolfowitz, Douglas Feith, who was the Undersecretary of Defense, who had, uh, I think, a law firm in Israel. Yes. And they, they studied under Leo Strauss, who was a Talmudic scholar, but he was a really smart guy, who believed that democracy was a human right and should be should be instilled everywhere, even at the, at the barrel of a gun. But a smart guy who thought, but they all came from the same orthodoxy. Same. Yes. So did Condoleezza Rice and all of them. So these neocons, for lack of a better word, who had these strong ties yeah. to the New American Enterprise Institute, um, th there was a lot of criticism that this was Israel's fight. Iraq had the fourth largest army in the world. Israel was always worried about Iraq. They, they were working on weapons of mass destruction. They'd used them on the Kurds. We and got, so we, we had to new, we have to neutralize them by all sure. means necessary, and, and, uh, and this is and, where we get into these conspiracies, right? Yeah, but but and, but and, and these elements. things seem to hold some water. Yeah, yeah. And the truth of the matter is, is Pollard is able to see chemical weapons are being developed in, and and a big shout out to uh, Susan, Suzanne, uh, Migdal, uh, who uh, helped William Northrup put together a book. Uh, called The Hunting Horse, and it, it documents all this stuff. Suzanne is also the person who sealed testimony uh, in front of the Presidential Advisory Committee. Um, yeah, I can say that. She, uh, <laughs> Jesus, she um, uh, talks about Gulf War sickness and, and its connection, which is where... Its connection to the, to the chemical, chemical weapons, weapons to the that chemical the Iraqis weapons, used on the, the Kurds. used on the Kurds, and... And on some troops, I guess. And on some troops. So what, where this is, is he's seeing Iraq is developing these weapons. And that, that's what he knows. And it's, it's getting support from the CIA. That's as, that's as far as he was seeing this thing happen. With a, with a state that said, when we get the chance, we're going to wipe Israel off the face yeah. of the fucking map. And at the time, there was the 1983 Memorandum of Understanding between the United States and Israel where they said, any and all threats and intelligence we get on you guys, boom, we're going to yeah. send it to you. Yeah. And they didn't. It was, it was a quid pro quo. Thing. And yeah. they didn't. They didn't. Anything. There, there was so, there was, uh, I think in what I sent you, 15,000 <coughs> pages of documents of threats and shit that was coming to Israel that the United and Pollard, States is like, so Pollard sees this. And then they just give this yeah. and go, here you go. Right, and Pollard Hamas sees this and Pollard says, the, the is Israel's fucked. biggest enemy, of the fourth largest army in the world, very rich oil nation, with Saddam Hussein has already started three wars, mm -hmm. uh, is is developing these weapons of mass destruction and and whether it's a mushroom cloud or a chemical cloud or a biological weapons right. Cloud and he against could drop the Geneva this, Convention, he could drop this yeah. uh, over Tel Aviv, sure. Haifa, whatever, yeah. kill a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million Jews. Yeah. And he said, This can't stand. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I gotta let the Israelis somebody. know, yeah, what's actually going on. Yeah, and that that was the and then he took the the codes, gave them to his Mossad contact. Yeah, so and the reason for that has is, Israel ever admitted that they got that? Of course not, no. right? No. And 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 you know, here's the other thing. The the uh the uh, there was never an American service person there was never an American life lost or placed in jeopardy by any intel that Pollard gave over. Ever. Yeah. Never. Until you maybe make this connection. And the connection is that those same companies, which I will not name, but those same companies that were involved in the manufacturing of these weapons, the sale and delivery of these weapons underneath the CIA, those, those same companies, representatives, then went to Iran and said, these guys are making weapons, we can give you antidotes and we can give you weapons to shoot back. Yeah. Yeah. Then in an official capacity, the front door, the, the receptionist, the hostess, the good guys show up to Israel and go, we got intel, here's the deal. These guys are arming up. You're fucked. 
So uh, we're gonna, we have technology that we can sell you to protect you uh, from these things. The same shit's going on right now. We're sending $28 million a week to the Taliban. It's happening right now. Right yeah, now this is are? happening. Yeah, 100%. Why? You tell me. For influence? Well, there's, there's a I couple- I mean, it makes sense. If you, if you get them dependent on American dollars- Well, there's a, some, there's, a, some... there's a couple different thoughts. There's- um, Women's there, rights there, and things like that. There's a lot of pressure for- Yeah, and particularly now we don't, it's very hard to tell what's disinformation and, and <sighs> propaganda, especially with a guy like me. Yeah. Who's just derpy derpy der. So there's, <laughs> but they're- Well, you're, that's not true. No, well, China, you're, China and you're, Russia- You've got some, I've read the things you've sent me. Yeah, I mean, dude, they, they were pushing- but, 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 but a guy like Pollard, in my opinion, still got to go. You can't be selling our codes, bro. You got to go. Yeah, I mean- I mean, it, I, I don't know what to tell you. But here's, here's, here's the know. thing. If, if, um, th with what I just laid out, like that part of it, I, I could see that. Yes. And I'm with you he until he, he took a choice. He, he, he made his a choice. allegiance was to Israel. Yeah. He made a choice. Yeah. You do the crime. You got to do the time. I would have done the same fucking thing. And the, and here's why is because it's, it's one thing. I think, and I understand maybe to a certain level, the philosophy of destabilization, which has never worked for the United States, but they keep using the same playbook because it fucking pays. Like, that's it. It's not because it works. It's because it pays. Is it possible that money. you're getting, you, you only have one side of that story, though? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, like you brought up uh, why in the Taliban. I, I honestly think the best work as an interviewer and as a... Uh, just as an American in the podcast space that Sean Ryan has done is the interviews that he's doing right now with the head of the uh, Northern, Northern Alliance in Afghanistan. And when he interviewed him and he's like, I have all the transactions and all the receipts of the United States sending the Taliban $24 million a, a week. And this is, this is what's going on. It's happening. And we need to bring him in to testify so we can hold the people accountable. But what he doesn't understand is the reasoning behind that and what's happening and why it would never change. Yeah. Would, also, you know, know. yeah, th th that's the thing. I mean, Sometimes giving money to a group of people so you can exert some influence and they start getting dependent on that check, you can, you can get some... You can or or you when can. you have other countries coming in and saying, this is the money we're going to give you if you keep going at the United States. And the United States says, I see that deal and I'll raise you a withdrawal sounds where like you a, get all like of our deal. military equipment for free and we'll keep giving you money every month. Leave us alone. It's geopolitics. Right. Right. There's no, there's not a whole bunch of consistency or morality in no. politics. No, it's, it comes down to physics. It does. <laughs> it does. It, that's a really good, that's a really good. Well, I, I'm stealing that from Evan Hafer, who, right, right. who's the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee. I did a podcast. He goes, when it comes down to war, there comes a point where it's not right or wrong. It comes down to physics, bro. Like the guns are, the bullets are flying this way. You better get the fuck out of the way and you better come back with more. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, there's a, there's a, but, but uh, geopolitics the, the, and the camera else dismantling that. metaphor, you yeah. know, it's like, that's your objective. Yeah. Like get it done. Yeah. So like on, on Pollard's side, dude, the, the, the part two of that story, which is so fucked is that the United States has a diplomatic mission under Donald Rumsfeld. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld goes over and meets with Saddam Hussein and says, hey, Iran's a bad guy, big bad guy. We're going to give you some help. Don't worry, we got you. During that mission, uh, previous to that, there is a laundry list of American companies that are manufacturing everything from genetically modified Lyme disease to genetically modified West Nile virus to genetically modified uh, uh, Valley fever to chemical agents, to things we've never fucking seen before. And, and that now veterans are coming home and getting tested and they go, I don't know what the fuck you have, but you're dying. Jesus. And, and so these weapons are made in the United States. Yeah. They're made in the US. Yep. And we have leaks that come out at these different places and little outbreaks that are swept under the rug. This is why Lyme disease went so fucking crazy. The, there were two locations in particular that made agents and made the grow medium uh, by which Saddam would be able to replicate these weapons in perpetuity. And one is outside of Fort Detrick, because right around that time, they said American soldiers cannot participate in the manufacturing of this stuff, and the American military can't do it. So they said, okay, we'll, we'll just get this warehouse 
that's just down the street and we'll staff it with people and we'll make it there because we're not actually doing it. It's this contractor of a contractor that's fucking making Kind of like Eco Alliance with gain and function research? 100%. 100%. And then there's another one. And the reason I'm saying this and saying it so like passionately and emphatically is because the fear of God that was put into me that made me say, well, I'm done. I'm not setting foot back in America again. I'm done. Like, is from me saying this. I fucked up. Like I, I said somewhere that this subsidiary company makes it sound like they're selling car parts. And because I said that somebody went, you crossed the fucking line. Like that's putting a bullseye somewhere. So, but I know these two places and if this fucking dummy knows it, everybody else knows it. And it's in the process of, of being disclosed as well. So they give this guy everything he needs. A four bird Colonel flies it over there. They assemble it over there with a team of German engineers and a bunch of, you know, operatives. They put together these missiles. Then the CIA gives logistical support to Iraq to attack Iran. A war crime, war crime, war crime. And then once that is done, Saddam's still holding this thing and we're still buddies and mission accomplished. But then he gasses the Kurds. Then the United Nations says, we're sending in inspectors. And he goes, send them. Cool. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because you're going to find out this technology belongs to you guys. I know something you don't yeah. know. That, that, you know. And so now, you know, that's taking place. And Donald Rumsfeld goes to George W. Bush Jr. now and says, we got we to get in there. And Bush, to his credit, at least in what I've read and some of the transcripts that I've seen, was, hey, uh, no, we, we have a singular mission. For, I'm being debriefed by my people and they're, and they're in, in the military, and they're saying, singular focus, Osama bin Laden, let's go get him. A guy who we trained, again, same fucking pattern. But uh, we need to stay on this. And it's like, no, dude, you don't understand. Your father was running the CIA during this operation. Like, he ran it under Reagan. Uh, there's also, he had knowledge. So uh, there's that. And I know me saying that, people are going to come, and they're going to come, and they're going to come hard. Fuck you. Uh, the receipts are there. Uh, he knew. So he knew. So that's heat he doesn't want. And people are like, oh, Saddam said he was going to kill his daddy. And that's why we invaded. Bullshit. Like there was, his dad was under real threat. There was real threat. So we go in. But then we go in and they're not there. Well, they're not there because they were mobile weapons facilities that were already moved by the time we rolled in. And also those backing up to Pollard, those facilities that that the Israeli Air Force was able to go in and take out, uh, those were CIA funded. So that's a fucking problem, right? Because now you're going, dude, they're ours. You killed our undercover agent, bro. He's a, you know, it's that moment in the movie where you go, he's a fucking cop. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what do we do? Hide the body. You know, we're doing that. And not to make it over simplistic, but that's, that's, that's the deal. But the fact that American companies made this, and by the way, when all this shit went down, there were chemicals that were sold back to the United States from Iraq. There's a company in Boca Raton, Florida, where this dude goes, yeah, I I could use some sarin. Uh, Who's got it on the market? This guy over in Iraq, sell it to me. That came from weapons of mass destruction. We manufactured it, took it over there, assembled it, used it. Then it gets broken down, disseminated throughout the region. So Some of the shit's in, in Ukraine, right? Yeah. Some of the shit's in Ukraine now, even. Which, which you know, uh, part of some of the conspiracies that are out there, but there is legitimacy to that, is Putin going, that place? Fuck that place. I know what they're making there. Yeah. Bing, and takes it out. So, so this whole destabilization tactic, everything that's happening, Boca Raton, this company is just a, it's a chemical dealer. It's, a, it's an arms dealer. Wow. And he's looking to make, you know, get this. And by the way, when that was uncovered, uh, okay, let's take you down to the courthouse. Sorry, let's cut you loose. Same thing happened with Manager Gabonifor with Iran-Contra. He was arrested, he was brought in. The next day he's walking free. The next fucking day he's walking free. This is a dude that's like brokering the freaking deals, man. That scene that you read in the, in the script, that's 100% real, accurate. Uh, another reason I got 
fucking busted. If you get this thing financed, that Jonathan Pollard well, thing, it's, it's, it's fine. It is. We're, yeah, that's yeah. going to be, yeah, it's going to be sick. People are going to eat this shit Yeah, it's up. gnarly. It's They're going to eat this story up. What's it called? Uh, it's called Mice. Because it's money, uh, influence, co- coercion. The, the, it's what uh, all the motivators Damn. that the FBI it's gonna says. Be, that, it's going to be, people are going to eat it up. Yeah. But that, that stuff got sold back. So, you know, fast forward to where we are now. We were sending billions of dollars to Iran. We're sending billions of dollars to, or we were sending millions of dollars to Hamas. Uh, we're sending millions of dollars to the Taliban. And it's like, why? Well, there's motivations for that. But history repeats itself. That's never worked. It's never worked. It's kept, what would you do? It's kept the peace. What, what, what would you while. do if you, if you were, it's probably an unfair question, but do you ever think about what you would do differently? Yeah, I think I, I don't, I, there's, I talked to Vincent Vargas. Vincent Vargas is a stud. He's a, he's, a, he's one of those guys, not a plant, <laughs> you know, but he's, he's one of those guys who's like border patrol army ranger, this guy. You know, did psyops. I got some great stories I got to tell you off offline that are pff, insane. But he, um, uh, you know, this is a this is a brilliant dude, a brilliant dude. But you know, we get down to it at the end of the day, and I'm like, bro, look at all this stuff. Like, what? Like, what the fuck, man? Like, what are we doing? And then we send our soldiers over there. They all get sick. They're dying. They come back. They're put on waiting lists to die at the VA because the VA is like, just let them fucking die. And once they're dead, we don't have to give them any money or investigate and we can keep this quiet. 250,000 veterans, Gulf War sickness, come back and they're, they're dying. And I'll say this, and, this is, and what's funny is, this is the most dangerous thing I'm saying. This is the most dangerous thing I'm saying uh, is that the United States is culpable and responsible. That's a big check, brother. 250. Thousand plus are you are you saying goal for that, so is it sick. is it your contention then that there is a group of people that run everything that are evil? I think there this is this sounds like evil shit. It's very evil shit. Vietnam was evil. I don't shit. know that the U.S. government is that organized. No, it's not. It, it, it's it's a competing not, interests, but compartmentalized. Yeah, the, the compartments are. Yeah, very very much so. It's like well, you've got people that probably say the way to push. The way to beat the Russians or the way to keep sure. or, or to bring China to his knees is to do some nasty shit, right? This yeah. is 3D chess. You also have non-military minded individuals making military decisions. Uh, okay. And executing That's for sure. wars and That's doing things sure. based on money. That's for sure. That and, was it. That was the Iraq invasion. Yeah. Money, profit, Most and Most of the people that were pushing bureaucracy. for the Iraq invasion had never done a day of, in uniform. That's exactly right. And had so, never been punched in the face, never even did a contact sport. It was, it was, it was, it was, uh, who was it? It was, um, who was the secretary of, uh, of defense, not defense, was it defense? Um, uh, black guy, uh, who was in the Bush uh, administration. Uh, yeah, uh, Colin Powell. Colin Powell. Yeah. He was the only guy in uniform who said, I don't think this is a good idea. Yeah. And then they made knew. him testify about weapons of mass destruction with that fucking in front They of carted him. him out. Jesus. And draw, and he was draw like, and quartered him. Yeah, and he hated it, but. I remember he was the only guy who, who was like, guys, do you know what this is? Do you know what war really is? Do you know what you know what's really going to happen here? Yeah. And then and then when when the Taliban actually wanted to come to after we 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 bombed Tora Bora Bora uh, Tora 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 yeah. Bora, we we the the Osama bin Laden had, had sneaked off. He he had gotten to Pakistan, I think. And we had all these, this whole military machine there, all our special forces guys, and the Taliban wanted to come to the table. Mullah Omar was like, I don't want to fight these fucking guys. Yeah. Okay, cut me a deal. That happened. And then we were like, no. No. Here's the thing, dude. We have this whole military machine here. We're going to turn it on you guys. Yeah. We have to do something. We got everybody here. We got all these We're toys. going after the Taliban. Yeah. Huge mistake. Yeah. And... You can justify it any way you want, but the, 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 it was a fiasco. I've read enough books about the Iraq and Iraq and, and Afghanistan. It's crazy. I, I mean, and I know enough people involved in it that the amount of waste, the fire hose of money that they just unleashed. Biggest polluter on the face of the planet. Just is war. fucking it's, outrageous. Yeah. And so, when, when so our, I, I, I can understand the cynicism and I can, and I, and I can understand when you want to go. But, but something is rotten here. Yeah, and brother, when, the, when our soldiers get there and they start getting sick and dying of things that nobody's ever fucking seen before. And here's the, here's where I go. I know, I know because these, these, uh, I said this to Vince, I, he, I go, what hope do you have in America? Cause I think it's fucked. I think it's, I think we're done. I think this is, this is, 
the the Goths, the Mongols, like they're they're at the gates. Mm-hmm. Like we're here. It's that moment, and you're relying on the spirit of the American people to turn this thing around. Good luck, uh, because the politics, left, right, center, are so corrupt and so fucked that there's no course correcting that thing except with blood. And that's a dangerous thing to say, but that's just based off of history. I'm just quoting history. I'm not saying my personal objective. I don't wanna run in and do any crazy shit, but I'm just saying history repeats itself and that's where we're at. We're at that moment in history, and I've said this before, where Ocasio-Cortez and Matt Getz are doing blow in the bathroom together and talking about their investment portfolios. And then they go over and, and, and yeah, He's saying yes. some loaded shit. So like, but you you want Ocasio Cortez and Matt Gates doing blow together and talking about their investment. One hundred percent. So then these Dude, two. I hope they were making out. I, I no, but 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 that's what I mean. Like they're they're. I think coming she's in. very attractive. I know, but there's not, not my favorite politician. But but they go at each other for theater. It's theater. It's theater. These guys are all making money. Then I, 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 I have some friends in in. in I know Congress. you do. I yeah. know you fucking and, know and, this. And, and yeah, and and. Yeah, but it's, what, it's an interesting thing. But where you asked me that question, so I'll, I'll just put the nail on it, is that, you know, this is sad, man. It, I love America. Like, I talked to my dad about, you know, none of the stuff in intricate detail, but, like, I just tiptoe around the edges and the guy's sobbing, you know? Yeah. He, he gave his life to protect and serve and law enforcement and this idea that we're a beacon on a hill. But, you know, and I've said this quote before, that there comes a time when the general defilement of a society becomes so great that the rising generation cannot be said to have a fair way between the choices of light and darkness. And we're there right fucking now. We, the people that are steering the ship, it only gets corrected by mutiny. Like, that's it. Or, or some comet hitting the earth or some act of God. Maybe getting closer to God. You know, sometimes I, I, I like what Tucker Carlson said, and I have my issues with him, but when he said, say a prayer. I, I agree with this. Sometimes. I agree with this. Say Buddy, I agree with this, and I want to say that, and I believe it, and I, I, I'm there. But when I'm talking to people who know, and I talked to this one guy, I talked to this woman as well. I'll use her as the example because she gave the same answer. And this is a woman who's at the epicenter. Like she's right in the thick of, of knowing not just what you saw and what I shared with you, but names, dates, addresses, phone numbers, how, the, how this thing rolled out. And that um, uh, the reason I said the military, this is also the woman who gave, who uh, Pollard made the introduction. I was able to sit down in a setting and see that I was able to see that, how do I say this so I don't fuck myself? <laughs> it's just like, Jesus, dude. Okay. Uh, I was able to see that, now nah, I'll leave it. No, nah, no, nah, fuck it, man. No, nah, I mean, you know, like. It's okay to leave it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but for this. You were able to see yeah. the machinations behind the magic trick. There are right. soldiers, brave military men and women who went, I'm dying. I'm standing here on this post. Let me get this soil and see what the fuck's in it. I'll tell you this. Let, I me, have, let me get this sample over here. I have here. a lot of friends, Special Forces friends, who... Um, who Started a, a data lot, collecting. A lot of their friends are, uh, are not making it to 60. They're nope. dying of cancer. Yep. It's really weird. Yeah. But it's, a, it's, it's, it's really kind of crazy. Maybe it's a factor of the, the, the stress they put themselves under, never sleeping, all that shit. I don't know. Some, maybe, yeah. But, yeah. but there's also exposure to all kinds of chemicals, the burn pits, all that. I but dude, know. to be that guy who's standing in a post, who's laying down hate, who's taking fire, who's defending his country and thinking yeah. he's doing the right thing and believes unequivocally that America is in the right and led by God and Jesus at a table with Benjamin Franklin. Like those guys go, something's not right scoop let me send this to a lab and see what's going on here and there's so much data about that and there's the cdc report that was done uh that you got to see that's public knowledge anybody can look it up uh where the cdc flagged like what are these fucking chemicals going to iraq what the fuck is this and then also these soldiers that are coming back and getting tested also their treatments where they go the only thing that's working on these cases over here are the most aggressive, gnarly antibiotic treatments anybody's ever seen. 
Well, that tells you what it is. When you find the antidotes to these things of the treatments that the veterans are getting, you then walk that back to what is ailing them because it's all, it could only be these three things. And, and then you go, okay, well, if it's only these three things, where did these three things come from? Oh, they came from the same facility that's over here and this is who manufactured them. And this is how they were genetically modified. Furthermore, there are professionals in the field that work for the United Nations that have also done soil samples that go, this is a genetic match to this, to the, what was used on the Kurds, over here for this guy who served in the Gulf War, over here to this chemical facility, they're a genetic match. So checkmate, like this is where it came. The, the, the chemicals that we made over here that were shipped over there were then used, and then we got there and made sure the house was clean and uh, got some, didn't get all. Uh, some of that shit went, went sideways in a really bad way, a really fucking bad way, and got into the hands of some really dangerous people. Uh, even more so than Saddam. And Saddam was a dirtbag. He needed to be taken out. This is a murderous fucking piece yeah. of shit, right? But that that then affects our own soldiers, and they come back and go, "I gave everything to this fucking thing. At least take care of me." Mm. And they go, "Well, soldier, Saddam's a bad guy. He used some really bad shit, and we're sorry for that. But we got that son of a bitch." And it's like, "That's your answer, motherfucker. You know, you're responsible for this. Pay up." We should be taking care of these guys, but nobody wants to because the price tag on that is massive. And that's the truth. How long have we been going? We have 20 minutes left. Cool. You're, uh, you're at an hour and 35 minutes. Okay, we'll cut it. Yeah. Um, I, I like leaving it that. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot to say. And, um, and I, I look forward to seeing this play out in drama form it's cool in in yeah. in in a show called mice but i mean that's art right like that's the goal well like you've goal done to... like you know i wanted to tease people because you've done all this work you you did show me you sent me all the receipts and um it's cynical and yeah. it's it's tough to look at yeah but i hope you're going to put all of the stuff in your it's in. show yeah it's in i know it's in. So, so CIA, we're looking for financing. If you want to come in and cut us the check for the fucking show, maybe, maybe we change some shit. You heard <laughs> no, that I'm here. Just, I'm just kidding. But and I and dude, again, I love America. I love I, and that you you asked me if I could go back and change something. It would be that because you're sending French soldiers, Israeli soldiers, uh, other soldiers in the region. They came ready because they knew what they were walking into. They came with antibiotic kits and yeah, all kinds it's, of shit. It's the chaos of war. And I think that, you know, we, we live in a time where, and you're seeing it with this. It's like John Stewart saying, take this, care of the 9-11 but survivors. But you're seeing it with this election now. You, you're seeing that there is a whitewashing and that there is, it, it's almost like the press has the mainstream media has its operatives and they are on one side of the of the equation. Whether or not you're a Republican or Democrat, it isn't good for democracy. It isn't good it's for America. Good. And and uh, that's gotta you, know, go. you just hear these catchphrases. They're being weird or this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, dude, you guys are all doing the bidding of a power structure and a system that is rigged to support you and your friends, not the average American. And when you say that, that people who don't vote for Kamala Harris or people who have some questions are misogynist and racist, That's crazy you're talk. reducing me to That's a noun. Talk. So fuck off. Fuck off. And it, it is, it is, it is the, the mainstream media is doing such a great job of being as divisive as possible. And I don't know what they're looking for. I don't know what they think is really going to happen. Because if they keep going down this, this road... You know, you you are going to you are going to create two parallel countries, two parallel economies, and and then, you know, if if people on the left really think they're going to get away with this, you're dealing with other people on the right who are not unfamiliar with objective reality, hundred percent, and they shoot straight. 100%. And I don't think that people, when I hear these college students talking about violent revolution, Had bro, no you got to shut up. No You've never even been punched in the face, and you don't even know what you're talking about because God forbid 
And God, for, the, we will start talking about civil war. It is awful to even talk about in this country. That is the most horrific thing you can have ever imagine because the worst people come to the top. And whatever you think is bad, you can triple it and then triple it again because you have no idea how bad it could be. Mm. And I don't think people realize that. When you talk to guys who've been through war and they've seen what those guys do to entire villages or how they, get, how they exert influence, you'll do everything. You'll eat right out of their hands. Yeah. You'll eat out of their asshole if they tell you to. 100%. And, and they can do that right away to you. So it's like, it, it, I don't know what the mainstream media is doing. I guess they're, they're trying to get their person in by any means yeah, necessary. That's it. They're lying and they're manipulating Brian. and they're just as big a problem. Dissemble the camera. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Dissemble the camera yeah. by any means necessary. And I, I know we're cutting. But, 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 but th this is important yeah, because it's like... and it is. It's, 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 it's important. Transparency is important. And buddy, the left and the right. Yeah. And I, I, both, sa I both, said this both. to my buddy. I go, I go, look, what's worse... There is no worse. It's totally fucked up. What, what's worse? The, the people that are telling you, hey, I'm, I'm all for you. I'm, I'm all for what you stand for and, and I believe in your cause and we're going to fight. And they're out there being super vocal about it. And meanwhile, they're incarcerating more African-Americans than anybody else. And we're, we, you know, we're talking about Kamala Harris's yeah. background, right? Yeah. So they're saying one thing and doing another. Yeah. Then you have this other side who's saying... We love our men and women in uniform. We'll yeah, do anything. You know stuff, what the solution yeah. to America is? Start praying. Yeah. Go to church. We need to put Bibles in schools. That's the solution. Yeah. And you go, yeah. yeah. And meanwhile... It's all reductive. The, the patron saint of conservatism, Ronald Reagan, and the next guy in line on the Holy Trinity, George W. Bush, is sending your sons and daughters to die for money. So what's fucking worse? It, there is no. I want to. I want to reiterate the, the goal no of a worse. republic is individual liberty. And, yes, and and we've got to protect that at all costs. And that was the grand experiment. And that means this. It does, man. That That's means the, this. That, that, so I'm more. I'm more. I'm more um, optimistic than you are. Actually, I think the American. You just spirit, know better people. <laughs> I, think the Amer I think the American spirit is alive get, and well. You, you just know better people. Well, no, bro. I think human beings don't like being lied to, and Do you ultimately really think they that figure out things. You, I, I, I want you to look me I, in the fucking. Well, eye, I, I, dude. I don't think I don't think people like to be lied to. I think that we have a, a nostalgia, a, a need for the truth, and human beings. Yes, if you give them enough protein, carbohydrates, and fat, they can stay somewhat dormant yes uh, and you know uh, maybe but but at the end of the day there's something about the truth now the biggest threat is nobody's oriented around the truth i don't know where to find the truth right. this boxer in the olympics they were saying had xy chromosomes not true she's yeah. actually a woman she was assigned a, a, a woman sure. yeah. so i fell into that trap too because i don't know where to look i don't know what's true anymore ai deep fake technology all of it's making more it more and more difficult uh, um, we'll figure our yeah. way through but but if if somebody wants to make all the money Come up with a way for me to find the objective truth. I want the truth. I don't want Gemini by Google that's going to show me, you know, their version of what the truth is. I want the fucking truth. Well, dude, I, you know, like that's also, and not like a, this episode was brought to you by, you know, but that, that was the thing when I saw the strikes happening in Hollywood. And I will say, and we're going to talk about this over like dinner or something. Where yeah, I, we'll do it I, I want to look you in the eye and go, do you, because I believe you. But I got to go, you believe that here? You believe that here? You believe with everything you've seen, with everything you've seen, everything you've been through, everything yeah. in the Hollywood machine, everything, you really believe that? And that that's astounds me because the I'm Vin, still an optimist. The, yeah, that Vincent said the same thing. I go, you've, ki you've killed. You've, you've, you've seen the worst of war, and yet you're like, uh, this optimism, this yeah. crazy optimism, yeah. which I love about you, which yeah. is, or, or you're completely be. psychotic. No, I'm, I'm, is, I'm an optimist. I, I, um, I believe that, uh, if you just keep aligning yourself with the highest truth you can imagine, you'll, 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 I, I think the truth is, is always, it always feels like you're outnumbered when you're fighting for the truth. How, that's how you feel when you're trying to do something good. Yeah. When you're trying to do something good, and let's let's let me let me define that. When you're trying to do something just, or you're trying to fight for something just, yes, you're you're naive, you're you're crazy. You yeah, know, yeah. you're gonna put be put up on a cross. You're gonna be mocked. All that stuff. Yeah. It's worth the fight. But buddy, and it's that, worth the struggle and it's worth the reach. That's it on the on the AI front. As soon as I saw the protests happening, as soon as I saw what was going on. I've worked as a sales producer for James Cameron's company for, for two years. I was in his skunk works. I was looking at all of his interocular 3D. But that guy knew what time it was. He yeah, goes, you, you started an AI company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, What's uh, it called? Uh, so it's called Nolan AI. 
And so what, what it is, is um, we're leading the charge in ethical AI. And that's another episode, and we'll talk about it at another time. But it's like the, the thing on AI, my buddy uh, Joshua Wolf, uh, Lux Capital Incorporated, leader in nanotechnology, just testified in front of Congress. We grew up together uh, in Lancaster, Jeez. in this desert town. He went on to be Tony Stark. I went on to be, I don't know, Rorschach or some shit. But like he's, he's amazing and incredible. And people say R RDJ patterned himself after Elon Musk for the role he didn't, it was Josh. And, and they're, they're buddies and they, they, they kick it. He's, an, he's a genius. But uh, AI- RDJ is Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr., Jr. sorry. But like the, the AI was the same. And I said, well, let's, why don't we try to be the good guys and lead the charge in ethical AI and in Hollywood? So like all the scumbaggery that exists, let's just take it away from them. So I can upload a script and in 12 minutes get a pitch deck, my entire film storyboarded, a schedule, a breakdown, a budget, and a connection to financiers. Damn. In 12 minutes. Damn. On that note, yeah. this has been Adam yeah, Simon. Check it out. Ladies anyway. and gentlemen, we'll check it out. Where can they find you? Uh, they can't. So you can't find me. <laughs> you'll you'll see always, his work. You'll yeah, see his no, work. I'm on Instagram. You can, you can find me on Instagram. I, I have nobody on Twitter. Like, who gives a fuck? But yeah, I'm on, I'm on, I do most of my uh, dumb fuckery on, on Instagram. That's right. That's all that dumb shit. Well, and thanks, my work. Thanks for doing the podcast, brother. Yeah, man. It's a good time. Off limits. Oh,